This program, the Fizz Barino. Please welcome your coach, Barino. Nice to have you with us, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, rock stars. It's good to see you, Coach Borino, with you on this lovely Tuesday, sunny day, beautiful day in D.C. These are the few days we enjoy between the shitty rain, cold drizzles and all that, and between, between the humidity and the 90, 95 degree weather. You know, my friends in California, <laughs> these are the times I miss California when the weather is so beautiful. Anyway, it's good to see you, everybody. Welcome to another session of Borino Live. We do this quite frequently, actually. My name is Borino, I am your coach. I come here to teach you, help you get more leads, get good listings, help more clients, and make moolah, kaching. Wait, I got the right sound effect. Hold on a second, bear with me. Where is it? Here it is, check this out. <laughs> that was a little gift from my son. Nice to have you. Good to see everybody. Today gonna have an interesting session. All week we've been talking about getting better listings helping more sellers, pricing the suckers right, getting them sold and serving them better. So today's topic will be pretty interesting. I think you're gonna benefit from it. It's gonna be all about how to pre-qualify sellers, why it matters, why is that important, not just to you, but to them as well. How to do it, I will actually walk you through a very simple script. You can actually write this down and read it, that's fine if you're comfortable with it. Just be careful, you don't wanna sound like you know a telemarketer reading shit. So. But it's good to either write down the answers or put it right on your computer. So I'll walk you through it. Not much to it. A few minutes you spend with the seller can save you a lot of headache, a lot of hassle, or it can help you land a great listing. Now, friends, these sessions are interactive. Post questions. I'll be happy to answer them. Anything goes. Whatever is on your mind, whatever I can help you with, that's what we're going to do. Groovy? All right. Jacqueline checking in. Mr. Tom checking in. Good to see you. Jay is saying hello. Kamal is here. Nice to have you. Holly, good morning to you as well. Well, might as well show you. <laughs> George checking in, ready to go. Let's rock and roll. Excellent. And Tom is moved to Arizona. I can help you find a home. Tom, I got to tell you, I am pretty comfortable where we live. We live in this beautiful lake called Lake Barcroft. We're just outside of Washington, D.C., about seven, eight miles away from the city. So we got the both of both worlds. You know, we got the trees and the beautiful wildlife. We get deer and foxes running around, lovely lake. And then in 15, 20 minutes, I can have coffee with uh, my lovely wife in some lovely cafe or restaurant in DC. So we're happy here. I like it. Not that I don't miss ocean California. Don't get me wrong. There's nothing more beautiful than Hermosa Beach. Hence, Hermosa Beach. See how I tied it in there? All right. So my friends, before your next listing appointment, before you sit down with the seller in your office or in their house, make sure you pre-qualify them. Before we're going to get into how, let's talk about why. You want to answer a few questions. You want to have some information before you spend time in preparing, putting together CMA, driving there, spending 30, 40 minutes with the seller, driving back. That's a big investment. And as you know, time is your most precious asset. It is the most important thing you have. Not to mention, you don't want to waste time with non-motivated sellers, non-realistic sellers. So I'd rather spend a few minutes in a conversation with them than invest all this work and effort hoping I'm going to get the listing. Then I go there and it turns out to be that the seller is in Disneyland thinking their $500,000 home is going to sell for a million. Has it ever happened to you or am I the only one? Of course it happens. So what I need to know is can the seller sell? Can they sell? Are they in a position to sell? Second, do they want to? Is it in their best interest? Do they want to sell? I need to determine that. Are they in a position to sell? Is this selling, is it the best solution? Now, I need to find out what the problem is. What is the problem? Now, some of these answers you may already have if you work in the systems I teach you, work in high probability leads, good leads, motivated leads, easier to find and easier to convert, like new expired listings, canceled listings, old expired, for sale by owners, referrals, open house leads. Those are all good quality leads. Some of these answers you already have. But you must know these because you cannot proceed until and unless you know I have a motivated seller, I have a realistic seller, I have a seller whom I want to help, I want to work with. Which is the next one. Do I want to work with them? Do I want them as a client? I'm not saying be picky, but I'm saying don't work with assholes. Don't work with people who don't appreciate you, who don't see the value in what you do. 
there are always some dietary kickers. You know, the Walmart mentality, and I'm not knocking Walmart. I buy stuff at Walmart, but I'm saying you are not Walmart. You are not an outfit that lists properties for $500 flat fee, right? So do I want to work with them? Do they fit the profile of my ideal seller? And this is a tricky one because if this month you have one listing appointment, some of you do. When was the last time you had a good listing appointment? When was the last time you sat down with a motivated seller who was ready to sign? Whether you got it or not, doesn't matter. You know what I mean? If you have one listing appointment this month, you're going to act, feel, and do things differently than if you have two or three lined up this week. You follow me? And I'm here to help you. You can have one, two, three good appointments every week. It's possible. You just need to have some things in place. So do I want to work with them? Are they my ideal client? Determine that in advance. And don't compromise. I can't even count how many times, it, well, no, let me rephrase that. Every time I violated that rule, it came back to haunt me. It bit me back in the ass. Every time I went with hope instead of common sense and certain rules that I should not be violating, I shouldn't have violated, but I did, I paid the price. And that one listing that I held on to, tell me if you can relate to that, cost me two, three, four other transactions I could have had instead. But because I had to invest so much time and effort gluing it together with a duct tape, with a stapling gun, holding it together, hopefully it's going to close and sell, while the seller was kicking me in the nuts, abusing me, spitting on me. You've had clients like that once in a while, right? Where everything is your fault and all. Don't violate it. Make a list of things that your ideal client must have. Now, this is a different approach. Because your average agent, desperate, scared, nervous, needy, willing to compromise, willing to do whatever it takes, would be willing to take almost anybody. As long as they're breathing, as long as they own the property, yeah, they will take them as a client. Don't do that. You know, there are certain lessons we kind of have to learn the hard way, and this was one of them. Don't compromise your ideal client. So this is what I need to know in advance. These are the things. There's another reason we want to do pre-qualification. Let me clear this out. Is that clear so far? Does that make sense? And I'll show you how we get this information in a pleasant conversation. You don't have to be scripted. You don't have to be pushy, nosy, arrogant, none of that, salesy. But you do need to know these answers. So now, the advantage you have the moment you go through this process, and it is an adjustment, the benefit number one is you establish control. You gain control. And I'll show you again. I'll, I'll walk you through the dialogue, how that's done. Why is that important? It has to do with position. If I'm positioned as the expert authority, so positioning is number two. Look at me spelling everything right today. Damn, I'm good. I'm pretty proud of myself. They should make these with little spell check. It'd be kind of cool. So I establish control. I set up positioning. What is the positioning I need to have in the seller's mind? What, what am I going after? Every other agent, needy salesperson, arrogant, pushy salesman, or expert authority? See, most agents, 99% of the agents, will be either too nice, that was my problem, because I always thought, well, as long as they like me, if I suck up to them, if I kiss their ass, as long as we're buddy, buddy, friends, friends, nice and kind, and they kumbaya, and you like puffies, I like puffies. They like me, but they didn't respect me, they didn't trust me, I didn't get the listing. So if I can position it as I'm in control, if I establish control at the beginning, everything else will be easier. If I screw this up at the beginning, if the seller has control, if the seller is in charge, if the seller is controlling and dictating what's going to happen, when and how, including the price, including the terms, it's almost impossible to recover from it. That's why I always say, <laughs> you notice that real estate is a lot like dating. You know what I mean? Two strangers meet. They have to kind of do the dance at first. Do I like you? Do I trust you? Can we make this work together? Isn't, isn't that like that? So if the seller is in control at the beginning, if the seller starts dictating terms, if the seller wants to remain in control, only one person can be. It's just like driving a car. Only one person can be behind the wheel. And if I want a smooth transaction with a motivated seller, I must be in control. Now again, this is not about being arrogant. 
This is not about being pushy. This is not about being an asshole. This is about being expert authority. When you go to the dentist, do you tell your dentist, I want you to use this tool, I want you to use this, and I want you to use that? No. You go to your accountant, do you tell them, I want you to use this formula, I want you to file it this way, I want you to, no. Your attorney, any high paid professional that you hire, that you pay for their service, for their expertise, is in control. They act in your best interest, just like you act in your seller's best interest. But you must be in control, positioned as an expert authority. There is a fourth benefit to doing the pre-listing interview, and that is connection. And that is important because, as you know, most sellers complain. Agents never listen. Agents only care about the commission. All they care about is themselves, to make a quick buck. They just want to give my property away. Does that sound familiar? Or am I the only one who had sellers like that? People don't feel heard. They don't feel appreciated. They don't feel the agent spent enough time understanding their position, listening, hearing what they're saying. You spending a few minutes in a conversation will immediately reposition you, expert authority, but also somebody who cares, who is compassionate, who wants to understand, who seeks what is the best solution for the seller. So it is all solution oriented. What is the solution? Because if it's in best interest for the seller to stay where they are, if it wouldn't make much sense for them to sell, if, if uh, selling the property is not really what would benefit them the most, Either I'll spend 10 minutes in a conversation, 15 minutes in a phone call. Then, as I tried and failed, listed the property, get the sucker on the market, then we got a good offer and then the seller starts stalling because they freaked out, because the reality hit them. Has that ever happened to you? I had that. And I was kind of puzzled and pissed off at the seller first, like, the fuck, this is a really good offer. They should be taking this. They should be thanking me, kissing my hands. And yet they were frustrated, they were confused, they were scared. And I missed something. Mm, I didn't miss it. Looking back, I didn't want to see it because of my desperation, because I was needy, because I needed the commission more than I needed to protect the seller's best interest. All right, guys, is that clear? So you're in control, you're repositioning yourself, you become the expert authority, you build connection, and you look for the best solution. That are the objectives. So now, you can fire up your computer, write this up, very simple, very easy. There are two ways this is handled. One alternative is you've met the seller before and you've seen the property before. I always like to see my subject property before I put together the CMA, before I sit down with the seller and talk about listing it. You know how we today complain when Zillow tries to move on our turf? And one of the things we say is, well, the Zillow didn't see your house. You should. You should preview it. I can tell you how many times I've seen a property where on paper it was one thing and then I previewed it and I'm like, holy shit, I didn't know it had that and it has this. You know what I mean? It's good to be familiar with the listing you're about to take. Number one. Number two, it gives you a chance to chat with the seller. We're still in a people business. This is still a connection business. Nurture business through relationships. And the best, fastest way to do that is in person. So if I can spend, sure, 10 minutes, that's all you need. Walk quickly through the property, maybe snap a few pictures, take some notes, chat with the seller. Looking forward to seeing you on Thursday. That's it. So I always prefer, if at all possible, take a quick look at the property must be familiar. This way you can speak as an expert. It would be just like a doctor needs to take your pulse and measure and do an exam before they can prescribe. Yeah, you with me? So there are a couple of things that would be slightly different. Now, it's not always possible, and that's fine. And occasionally, there are circumstances where you're prospecting, you hit it off with somebody who is ready to list and you know that. Fine. You're going to improvise a little, and I'll give you the alternatives there. But in most cases, you have seen the property, you know some basics about the circumstances of the seller, we assume that, and you're familiar with their condition, property condition, and the seller's objectives. Does that make sense? All right, guys. So, my objectives, I have four written down here. Can the seller sell? Do they want to sell? Are they ready to sell? That's important too. Because if they have six months before the house goes on the market, there's no point of doing CMA. There's no point of spending time with them talking about all that stuff if they're not ready for another half a year. I can still provide good information. I can mail them stuff. We can do things to keep them in the loop. But I would not invest a lot of time doing a CMA. Do I want to work with them? We talked about that. Is that an ideal client? So, now I have three 
simple instructions here. Before you get into any type of conversation, whether it's prospecting follow-up, take a deep breath, smile, and relax. Because if you feel good, if you feel centered, if you feel comfortable, so will they. If you're tense, nervous, insecure, if you are just trying to pitch something, they can pick up on it. Can't you tell? When a telemarketer calls you and tries to sell you some shit, we can tell, right? So be careful. Relax, smile, feel centered. And then here we go. You start, introduce whatever pleasantries, short and simple, says, uh, Jim, can we just take a few moments? Uh, I have a few questions. May I ask them right now, real quick, before we get together? Short, simple intro. Let's take a moment to talk about your plans. Uh, now, you guys mentioned the reason you're selling the house, you want to be closer to your family in Florida. Is that still the plan? I would probably pull up my CRM, right? Review your notes. How important on a scale of one to five is that to you guys? How bad do you really want to be there? And if all goes well, how soon would you like to be there? What would be the ideal scenario for you? Again, I need to know, is it 30 days? Is it six months? Is it two years? Is it, well, if it doesn't work out, we can always stay here. Red flag, okay? Have you guys found a new home yet? Do you know where you're gonna be? Now, as far as the property, I'm showing here four bedrooms, three baths, 2,340 square feet. Does it sound about right? Excellent. And you guys lived there for about 15 years, correct? Are you planning to do any repairs before we put the house on the market? Now, watch what I did there. Let me repeat it slowly. Are you planning to do any, report, any repairs before we put the house on the market? That's a little neuro-linguistic programming, a little, little NLP there for you. It's called a presupposition. Before we put the property on the market. What am I doing there? I'm positioning myself as their agent. It's very subtle, it's very quick. Mentally, on conscious level, they will not register it. But subconsciously, they will get it, which is all I need. We're in this together, we are a team. Are there any additions, any permits? Now, if you've seen the property, of course, you're gonna skip all that. Any potential issues that you're aware of, like noise or easements, that kind of stuff. Good. What is the current balance on your mortgage? Now, as far as the price, do I need to know if the seller is realistic about the price? Of course I do. I'll put together a detailed market evaluation when I come and see you guys. But uh, give me an idea. Ideally, what would you consider a fair price for the house? Now, again, I'm very careful. I don't want you to memorize this. This is not about memorizing scripts. But a term, fair price, is important. Fair price evokes what would you consider fair rather than what is ideal. You with me? Slightly different feel to it. What is a fair price? What are the expectations? Now, you as a market expert already have an idea that should be listed for about 350,000. So if the seller comes back, well, we owe 400 and we'd like to get 600 for it, do you think you have a big red flag? Yeah, <laughs> about 20 by 20 feet, right? Now, as far as selling, what's more important to you guys? Time it will take to sell or the sales price? In other words, would you rather sell fast or are you willing to wait and get a better price? Now, why am I asking that? Because this, in this day and age, you have many companies now, more and more are coming to the market, who are offering instant offers. And there is small, granted, but there is a part of the market, some of the sellers, who are willing to take it, who are willing to trade the higher sales price for the speed and the convenience. We don't have to do repairs, they don't have to bother with any shit, boom, instant offer, push a few buttons online, done. So if the seller is considering this, I need to know now. Because if they tell me we'd rather sell really fast and we're willing to sacrifice a few dollars, I must know that because then I can offer a solution to that. I'm not there to manipulate them. I'm not there to convince them, but I do need to know. There's always a solution. You know what I mean? So I will ask that. Are you guys planning to interview other agents? Competition? Need to know. Um, now, this is important. How will you choose your agent? Is that a good question to ask? How will you guys choose your next agent? Is there anybody else involved in the sale? You know, one of those, husband is there, but the wife is not there, or husband and wife is there. Yeah, but you know, our uh, uncle helped us with buying this house, so he needs to be here, so we can make a decision. I need all the decision makers present. All right. Um, so we'll go over all the information. This is important. It's called pre-framing. And we should be done in about 30 minutes or so. Is that okay? I'm pre-framing how much time it'll take 
to go over the whole thing. Your presentation should be about 30 minutes or less, by the way. If you go longer, you're in trouble. We won't have time today, but just keep that in mind. Long presentations, not necessarily good presentations. We'll be putting an information packet together for you. Uh, you should have it in just a day or two. Please go through it before I see you. That's a reference for a pre-listing package that they're going to get as soon as I finish with them. Important to have one. I actually have a video. I don't know if you've seen it. If not, it might be here. If not, just look it up. It's really good. All right. Any questions you guys have for me? Is there anything you have for me? Ask them. One of the questions I like, let's see, where do I have it? What concerns you the most when it comes to selling the house? I want to know what worries them the most. Because I know that there'll be two forces at play. This is the new house in Florida. This is where they want to be, right? They want to be there. I know their core driving emotion. I know their motivation. I know the intensity. But I also know that there is another force holding them in place. There always is something that worries the seller. Pick the wrong agent, not get enough money, get tangled in some lawsuit, some legal shit, or it's going to take too long. I need to know what that is. What concerns you the most? What worries you the most when it comes to selling a house? Besides, asking that question, start building connection. Wouldn't that be helpful to know what really concerns them, what goes on in their head? Because you know there'll be some emotions. It's not a logical process, it's an emotional process. So I ask these questions, I go through it, I encourage them, ask me, what else would you like to know? Now, here's an important part to it. If I know they're going to be interviewing, which they usually do, other agents, I can do a preemptive strike. In other words, I will try to block the other agents from trying to take the listing before I see them, if at all possible, be the last one interviewed. It's always the strongest position. There's a science behind it. You want to be the last agent because by then they're bored, by then they may be realistic on price if the agents are good and presenting good quality CMA. They're ready to make a decision at the end. It's easiest to get them to sign if you're the last agent. But they may be a rock star, one of my students maybe, who will try to close them. Because if the presentation is good, if the seller is motivated, and if there's a relationship, connection, and trust between the prospect and the agent, Getting the listing signed at the end is the easiest part because it's a natural ending. It's normal. It just floats like a river. You get to the bridge, done. So I have to do a preemptive strike. So I would say something like, uh, Jim, you guys are going to be interviewing other agents. I think that's smart. It's always good to compare services. But what I'd like to ask you is a small favor. I will prepare all the info. I will do my homework to make sure I'll show you exactly what is the most a qualified buyer willing to pay, how long will it take to sell realistically, what marketing we need to have in place. Now, as you interview these other agents, sometimes, especially the salespeople, will try to close you and get the listing. And then sometimes do it because they don't want you to see the marketing I offer and the services I offer, so they don't have to do that. So just hold off on the decision until I sue you. Would you promise me that? Would that be okay? That's it. In most cases, they will say, yeah, sure. Because nobody wants to be sold. Nobody wants to be manipulated and nobody wants to be pressured. And if I raise that little flag, guess what? When the next agent does the presentation, and they're trying to go for the signature, seller will be alert because I warned them about it. Pretty clever, huh? Doesn't work 100% of the time, but your odds are better. That's how you pre-qualify sellers. This conversation should take seven, eight, 10 minutes at the most, maybe longer if necessary, if there is something other than what we've discussed here. Go over these things with them. Affirm their answers you already gotten before. Why? Because the seller is in a different frame when you first meet, let's say, for sale by owner. Are they going to be completely open and honest with you? Of course not. Or expired listing? Of course not. So things they may or may not have told you before may or may not be true. So I'd like to confirm. I'd like to make sure. I would like to, I'd rather ask two, three times and really know. And I don't mind spending a little more time in that conversation until I'm satisfied. Why? Because I'm in control. Let me give you an insight, guys. Sellers want you to be in control. Sellers don't resist that you're in control. What they do resist and what they don't want is to be manipulated, to be pushed. Those are two different things. 
but they need a professional. That's why you're there in the first place. That's why you're in the running. That's why you got the appointment in the first place. Because they need help. They need advice and they need guidance. But they need to make sure they're in good hands. That's important. They need to feel like you're the most competent, most logical, best choice they make. And the way to do that, you're in control, you position yourself as an expert authority, you build connection, very important, this is where trust happens, and as you know, they will not do business with you unless they like you, trust you, and respect you. And you find the best solution. And if the best solution means, because I'm not, not attached, never attached to the outcome, if the solution means, you know what, based on what you told me, I don't think it's in your best interest to sell. And I'm sure there'll be other agents who will tell you otherwise. And I'm sure they would be more than happy to take the listing. If for nothing else, they can stick their sign up there so you can pick up some leads. But I don't think that's going to serve you well. I appreciate your time. I really enjoyed the conversation. Best of luck. And I would walk. Helpful? What do you guys say? Yes? Mr. Ted says, this totally works. Just secured my sixth listing and I've only been in the business for two months. Moreno is the man. Ted Davis, you're the man, my good sir. That, that is brilliant. And I tell you why that's brilliant, why I'm excited. Not just for the endorsement, although I very much appreciate it. It is not that you guys don't know what to do. That's bullshit. Don't kid yourself. You have 400 Moreno videos here on YouTube. You have hundreds of sessions here on Rockstars. There, all the information is out there, not all, but plenty for you to get going. It is doing it. It is trusting this process. It is actually doing the pre-qualification call, having the balls to pick up the phone, get the seller on the phone. Now, you know why most agents won't do it? They're scared. You know what they're scared of? What if the seller says no? What if the seller gets turned off? What if the seller rejects me? What if they cancel the appointment? You can't live your life, let alone build a profitable business on what if. You need to have a set of rules. You need to have a set of standards. You need to have a procedure and a system. And that's what I teach you guys. And that's what we're going to work on next month. That's the whole plan, is I'm going to take a small, very small group of you. It's going to be a very cool, intimate setting where I'm going to walk you through everything. How to set appointments, how to pre-qualify sellers, how to put together a pre-listing package. It's a seven-step process. And I'll give you a little secret, guys. The, the last part of the presentation where the agents worry the most, pricing and contract, is the easiest one. Because the heavy lifting happens up front. The heavy lifting happens during the pre-qualification, the pre-listing package, everything that happens before you sit down with the seller. Agents who think I'm going to get them once I sit down with them are sadly mistaken. That seldom works. And it's a lot of work. It's hard. Speaking from personal experience, remember, I learned the hard way. I don't know why. I like the abuse, I guess. <laughs> you know, a little S and M. It's a hard way to do it. It's easier to have your marketing and your pre-framing and indoctrination and a couple of videos and emails and the communication before the appointment. So by the time you come in, you're already perceived as the, who is the biggest rock star these days? Who's like the biggest? Lady Gaga of real estate or I don't know who else? Like Prince, God rest his soul, you know, big rock star. They perceive you differently. There's a different relationship. They are gladly give you the control. They gladly give you the answers because they feel taken care of. They feel heard, connected, and understood. There is trust. And if you try to build it during the presentation, ooh, way too late. All right? So I appreciate that, my man. Good job. Really, really good job. Holly says, this is really helpful. Thank you. She would like to know, what do you say as a new agent when you encourage them to ask questions if you don't know? Uh, I would say, I don't know. I would say, I don't know, but I'll find out. That's a great question. Let me find out. I'll get back to you in an hour. Do you want me to text you or should I call you back? I'll give you a little insight, Holly. Even after 20, I don't even want to know how many years I've been involved in this shit. A lot. Over 20 years. There are still things I don't know. I have friends, agents, who've been at this for 20, 30 years. My man Mike Cribben, my man Mike Putnam, my friend Lisa, Jessica, all of these guys, years in the business. We still get stumped. And it's not because these people are stupid. They're very smart and very successful. I mean, Jesus, Mike Putnam, 100 deals a year? That's not bad, right? Over a million dollars in commissions. It is because the business is changing. Business is evolving. Things are changing constantly. 
and there is no such thing as average transaction. There is no such thing. There's always something. And just when you think you got it all, you got all the answers, the real estate gods go, oh, you think? Watch this. Hold my beer. And they drop something at you and you go, what? So don't worry about it too much. Learn, of course. Do the best you can with what you have. Do the best you can with what you have. And be willing to learn. And if you don't know, don't know. It's okay. Learn. But if you don't know, just tell them. Be honest. People appreciate honesty. One of my first, no, first listing I got. Little old lady in Downey, California. Tiny two-bedroom house was the cute little thing. Lovely old lady. I was brand new. Just fresh out of the real estate school. My, my fresh license, you know, didn't know much. But we could hit it off. We clicked. You know, I, I pretty early on developed this ability to build connection and trust. Go figure, why am I such a good real estate coach? You guys like me and trust me. So we got in a conversation. And I always, I kept thinking, what if she asked me how long I've been in the business? God, please don't ever ask me how long I've been in the business. Guess what she asked me? <laughs> exactly, how long have you been in the business? I'm like, oh shit. And you know, it's one of those moments. Tony Robbins says, it's those little split moments where the destiny is shaped. And this was one of those moments where I said, no, you know, I'm going to be honest. First I thought, I'm going to fudge a little. I mean, how is she going to find out? But I didn't. And I said, I'll be honest. You'll be my first listing. You'll be my first client. And I'm really excited about the opportunity. I very much appreciate that. And if my word, then I'm like some of these other agents, I'll work my ass off and I'll be here if it means come on Saturday night to show the property or get the paperwork signed on Sunday or do whatever it takes until the deal is done and you're with your daughter and all is well. And uh, she listed with me. She signed the contract. I got the listing. I sold it. And then I asked her, why did you pick me? You could have had agents who have plenty of experience, plenty of knowledge, more than I did. And she says, I liked your enthusiasm and the honesty. Because what I had later found is she was testing me. She knew I was brand new. She figured it out. But she was willing to trade the inexperience for the passion I had, for the enthusiasm, for the fire in the belly. Don't ever lose that. Whether you've been in the business for a month or 10 years or 20 years, it is one of the most attractive qualities you can have. It's that passion, being optimistic, being full of hope and solutions, being willing to offer to the seller. That means way more than how many years you've been at it. Case in point, I know plenty of agents, not my students, but plenty of agents who've been at it 10, 15 years, they still struggle. They're still not making enough money. So don't let that discourage you. Learn, get better, and yes, you will lose some business because you're brand new. That's just part of the deal. You gotta hustle more, work harder. Helpful? All right, Holly, you got this. Groovy. So, Jennifer, good comment, yes. Honesty is always the best. Very much agree with that. Totally agree, Jennifer. All right. Let's see. Yes, there will be a replay. Of course, we always leave this up for you, guy. How do I find motivated sellers? Al, I will do a separate session because that is a, a different topic. But I will teach you. We will do a session sometime next, next week, specifically what lead generation, prospecting, advertising, and marketing you should be doing right now to get good motivated sellers. Fair enough? All right. But I wanted to run this by you. If you haven't checked out yet, do me a favor. Spend a couple of minutes. Go to goborin.com slash live. Check out the class. Because stuff like this, we're just, we did right now, we will do there. You will learn the entire process. I will show with you how I managed to become a rock star listing agent without spending a lot of money on advertising and marketing. First, because I didn't have it. And then once I had the money, I'm like, well, fuck it. If I already have a system that doesn't need it, then why bother? You know? So I'll show you. I'll show you that the secret of getting good listings has very little to do with your complicated systems or expensive budgets. It has more to do with having a step-by-step -step process. And it has more to do with how you communicate, how you come across, of course, what kind of expert you are and how you present information, what kind of CMA you deliver, how it's presented to the seller. You will understand that a lot of the decisions, a lot of the hurdles you have to overcome are not, have very little to do with facts, have very little to do with logic and way more with emotion. And if you want to know what those emotions are, if you know how to address them, you become a master influencer. 
Well, people will not feel manipulated. They will not feel pressured. On the contrary, they will be drawn to you. They will be the ones asking you questions like, what's our next step? What do we do next? Where getting the signature at the end, having them agree to the right price, is the easiest part. It is the easiest part because there is no us versus them. There is no tug of war. There is no pressure. It's all based on we're in the team together. We're in this together. We're going to get this done together. And you're going to start decoupling the emotions from the logical decisions they need to make in order for them to move, to get the property sold. So I don't want you to take overpriced listings. That's a huge disservice to your sellers, huge disservice to you. I want you to take good, well-priced listings, get them sold, serve your clients well. And I'll teach you how to do that. We'll spend two days together in a class here in DC. I teach it once every two years. This will be the only time I'm teaching it this year. We are almost sold out. We sold out every year. Really good class, very powerful, where you're not just going to learn, where I'm going to show you a lot of stuff, I'm going to teach you a lot of stuff. And some of the stuff I need to have you in the classroom because you have to try it, you have to test it. It'll be like swimming. You can watch a video about swimming or you can be in the pool. And if you're in the pool with a master coach, wouldn't that make sense to learn this? Just ask yourself, if you lose a listing, how much money you lost? Not just at one commission, but maybe sell them something else, maybe get a referral. It's a very expensive loss and a very expensive lesson. So to spend a few bucks on a two-day workshop like that, I think is money well spent. I think you will agree. Come to the workshop. I'll give you my listing presentation. It's been updated. We just released a 2.0 version. Haven't released it yet. It's in the process. You will have access to it. You'll get a book, a manual, how to learn all that simple stuff. No memorizing, no scripts, no pushing, none of that stuff. We'll spend two full days where, let me show you a little bit of the class where we go over a theory and then you're going to practice. You're going to try different things from the opening, from setting up appointments, confirming, asking questions, pre-qualifying, to the actual listing presentation. That should take between 25 to 30 minutes. You'll understand why there's a psychological reason. And you're going to try it over and over. And some things will work, some things won't work. We're going to have cameras on you and you're going to see yourself. You're going to hear yourself because I know how you guys are. You're busy. You don't have time to record your listing presentations. You don't have time to work on it. You practice on your sellers. And the reason I know that is because that's what I do. <laughs> but that's expensive and it's hard and stressful. So this is easier. This is a very safe, fun, pleasant environment. Or even if you completely screw up, you just take it over and try something else, try something new. So come join us. Go to goborino.com slash live. Check out that short little video that will give you more details what's going to happen when. There's a list of hotels. There's all the information that's on the page. Now, of course, you can't buy it. The only way you can come to the class is I will personally talk to you. I. Since the group is so small, I want to make sure you're a good match. So there's an application. You're going to click on the button. You're going to give us a small, fully refundable deposit. That's just to make sure you show up for the phone call. We get on the phone, you and I personally, no pitch or anything. But I have some questions for you. I'm sure you have some questions about the class. And if we feel like we're a good match and you would benefit from it, we'll sign you up. The $100 will go towards the tuition. And if not, we'll refund it immediately. All right. The registration is closing this Sunday. The 20, is it 28th or 29th? So if you're still con contemplating it, just get on the phone. Let's talk, you and I. Okay? I think you would benefit. All right, my friends. This was a good session. Glad you enjoyed it. Izzy, what's happening? Good to see you. Good question here. Let's answer that. You asked to preview during the first contact, then you call them for pre qualification questions. Yes, the idea is to preview the property in advance. Now, it depends on the circumstances. Sometimes you may pre-qualify them and then you say, you know what, let me take a quick look at the property. Before I finalize the market evaluation, I'd like to take a quick look at it. Can you give me a 10-minute tour tonight or tomorrow? Pick a day. Okay? Depending on the circumstances, if you haven't seen the property, go see it first. My preference would be to go through these questions first because if I am clear that either they're not motivated or they're not going to sell or they're difficult to work with whatever barrier that I know I cannot overcome, I don't want to waste time driving, previewing property if I know I can help them. But that can be flexible too. Because at the end, the goal is this. If the seller is motivated and if they fit your ideal client profile, help them. Do whatever it takes to get that listing and help them because they're in better hands with you than anybody else. Because you're going to serve them better than anybody else. That's how I always felt. I always felt like I have the obligation to help the client, even if it sometimes means in spite of the client. You know what I mean? Sometimes you have to kind of help them see the truth and get them to the truth in spite of them.
because sometimes the noise they have in their head, their fears, past experiences, and things they've heard, things they read, may be the barrier that I need to help them overcome. Are you with me? You understand what I'm saying? All right. Nice comment from Vel. Thank you so much. Makes me feel better about not being in the business that long. As always, you rock. Well, thank you. Is workshop for new agents specifically? Anita, that's a really good question. Years in the business don't matter. I encourage you, if you're new in the business, come do the workshop. Little insight. I have, I reach success with you guys who are new faster. I've helped seasoned veterans. Some of you guys who come to me are 15, 20 years in the business. But it is faster and easier for those of you guys who've been at this a short period of time, few months or a year or two. And I think it is because we don't have to spend that much time undoing the beliefs, the baggage, the bad habits you've developed over the years. So if you're a newer agent, I think it's a fantastic opportunity to, to learn it right in the first place, to get it right from the... Uh, I would have saved myself a lot of money, a lot of stress, a lot of gray hair, and a lot of dead ends, and a lot of bad, expensive lessons had I gone to a workshop like that. But here's the thing, and Google this. Nobody else teaches you what I teach you, like this. There is another class that is available by a big coach, big company. But what you're going to do there is sit in the audience with hundreds of other agents, take notes, memorize scripts, and then repeat what everybody else is saying. There's no hands-on, there are no cameras, there's no one-on-one, -on -one, none of that. It's a big class where everybody will say the same things. Has it ever occurred to you why sellers say you all sound the same? We're looking for the most the, we're looking for the cheapest agent. You know why they look for commission? Why they want you to cut your commission? Because in their mind, during the presentation, they arrive to a conclusion, they're all the same. And you know what? Most agents are. They say the same things, they do the same things, it's all the same. So it makes logical sense from the seller's perspective to get the cheapest one. What I'm going to teach you is a very different approach. Very different. And you'll see, within about 30 minutes in, you're going to recognize that, oh shit, this really is no joke. This is very different. But once you get the hang of it, you could never go back to reciting scripts, being pushy, doing the traditional stuff that still most agents are trained to do, which I think is a shame. But we're not going to change that. I'm here to help you, but you need to come to me. So watch. We're going to have two full days of turning you into a rock star. Confident, competent, comfortable, in control, but also connected with the seller. Because the platform on which we can build all this is you wanting to genuinely serve and help people. Yes, you want to make money. Of course, I want you to make a lot of money. I want you to make a lot of money. I want you to have a fantastic lifestyle. But the way we get there, the fastest way to get there, is to serve, to help. Notice that I walk the walk. Like, I'm here genuinely wanting to help. And some of you will come to DC. I'm really excited. Some of you will not, and that's okay. We're still friends. It's all good. I understand it's not for everybody. And it's not exactly cheap either. I get that. But if you run the numbers, if you really analyze what does it cost you not to get a listing, then this is just no-brainer. Okay? Not to mention we offer a really crazy guarantee. When Roseanne, my assistant, saw it, she said, are you out of your mind? Look at the page. You'll see it's on the bottom. It's a crazy big-ass guarantee. Anita says, I'm a 15-year-old seasoned agent. I think it, you will still benefit a lot, Anita. I think there is plenty, plenty you would be able to learn and walk away with. And I'm sure a lot of the things you already do well, we're going to integrate it. That's the beautiful thing about the process I'm going to teach you. You don't need to become a persona. You don't need to change who you are. You don't need to become that flamboyant or that pushy or that salesy type. You don't have to be aggressive or arrogant. You be you, which is going to bring out the best in you that resonates with sellers who suddenly go, there's something different about Anita. We like her. Because after the appointment, this would be an interesting experiment. If I go back and I ask, well, what kind of marketing did she offer? What was her plan as far as Facebook advertising? What kind of open house strategy did she like? Most sellers would not have a clue. They would not be able to answer the specific questions. But if I ask them, what do you think about Anita? You know what they would answer? With rock solid answer, we like her. We trust her. I think she's our choice. Again, because it's an emotional, not a logical decision. You will still present your marketing plan. Absolutely. You will still present a really well thought out, well prepared CMA. Totally. 
but that's not why you get the listing. The answer is somewhere else. Okay? So yeah, I think years in the business really doesn't matter. Come on. Will it be one-on-one -on -one coaching also where we, each of us gets enough attention to improve? Absolutely, yes, come on. That's why I keep the room so small. We cut it off at 20. That's exactly why. Because I will be walking around the room working with you guys, giving you points. We're going to stop after each segment and then we're going to take the camera takes. We're going to put it on a big screen and we're going to show you. Come on. Notice how you break the eye contact, how your body language shifts, how things change and how the seller reacts to it. Because a lot of what I'm going to teach you is not just in clever lines. Oh, I'll give you plenty of neuro-linguistic programming and a lot of firepower so you always know how to answer questions and what to say and what to ask. That will be part of it. But you will soon recognize how what you say it has nowhere near as much impact as how you feel and how you say it. And a lot of how you say it is not just in tonality, that will be part of it, but also in your body language, eye contact, your breathing, the overall energy you emit. And people respond to it. That's just how we are wired. This is our neurobiology. And you will master it. There is a way to learn this. Not as a technique, but as a new way of communicating. That's very natural, organic, but very powerful. Okay? So yes, there'll be a lot of one-on-one. -on -one. We'll work together very closely throughout the two days. And you'll get plenty of practice and plenty of feedback. But the interesting lessons will not just be you doing it but you being on the receiving end, where you start observing other people and you start noticing what works, what doesn't, what feels right, what feels off, what feels confident, what feels arrogant, what feels insecure. Great lessons, you'll see. All right? So good questions, my friends. Dan, why not flush up sellers up front? We are ideologically opposed to paying whatever your commission rate is. Dan, that's a good question. Here is why. Sometimes you can, but sometimes you cannot. And the reason you're not always able to do that is because the seller is not in a position to trust you yet, to connect with you. You will need some time to establish trust report, control, and positioning. And that sometimes takes time. Sometimes you need to give them the opportunity to evaluate what do they get if they list with you rather than the discount broker. And yes, some sellers, no matter what you do or say, go strictly by commission. Those are the tire kickers, you know, I call them the Walmart type because it's the price tag that matters to them. Those I would discard. The problem is you sometimes don't know upfront who is who. And many sellers who at the beginning, strictly commission, 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 my bottom line, once I had a chance to sit down with them, we went over the things I was going to do for them and the overall you're in good hands sensation. They saw the difference and were willing to pay the premium, if that makes sense. Yeah? So don't discard them too soon. Give them a chance. Otherwise, you may be flushing out the baby <laughs> with, the, with the water. Yeah? One more question. What if you don't know any sellers or know of opportunities? This coaching will make sense once I know who to talk to, correct? We will not spend a lot of time how to get leads, if that's what you're asking. But I can tell you from my personal experience, once I knew how to deliver a rock-solid, confident listing presentation, everything changed for me. It's because it has a fall-over effect, spill-over effect. Because once I knew if I sit down with the seller, if they're motivated, I know how to get the damn listing. My follow-up improved. I was suddenly more confident. My prospecting improved. Because I knew all I need is a motivated seller. I know what to do. Until that point, I was hesitant. I was tentative. Because I wasn't sure, even if I sat down with that seller, I knew how to present, how to talk about pricing, commission, marketing, and how to get the signature. Once I did that, it was like a solid foundation I could build on. Okay? Make sense? All right. Good questions. I would like to know... When is the Finding Motivated Seller Seminar? It's not on our website. Please advise Al. I will post it here on Rockstars. Everything we do, I always promote here on Rockstars. So just keep an eye on it here. Come back and I'll, I'll announce when we're going to do it. It's not on our calendar. But I am teaching this Friday. And again, I'll post it here this afternoon. This Friday, I'm doing a special training session on how to put together a powerful CMA, how to become a pricing expert and put together a CMA. 
it seems like the entire week this week is all about taking good listings and helping sellers and pricing your listings right. Especially in this market, you got to be really careful how to price the suckers so they don't sit there for too long. You don't have annoyed sellers or bad reputation, like you don't know how to get listings sold. So everything we talk about this week is about listings. And of course, the idea is to give you enough information and some of you come to DC, you'll see that it can make a big difference. So that's going to be on Friday. That's a webinar. I'll post it. Come join us. It's 1 p.m. this Friday. How to be a pricing expert and how to put together powerful CMAs. All right. Okay, my friends. Tamiko says, great information. Glad you liked it. Got it. Thank you. Good. All right. My friends, goborin.com slash live is the website. Do join us. Come sign up. I would love to talk to you. We'll get on the phone. 10, 15 minute conversation. Feel free to ask anything you want. I'm here to help. Appreciate very much you being here today. Really enjoyed the session. More coming your way. Looking forward to it. Coach Borino signing off. Time to grab some lunch and have a productive afternoon. Thanks. I'll talk to you soon, guys. Let's go get them. Bye, everybody.